Look at all that ride tech coilover goodness yes. going into that car. Yes. Oh boy. It's happening. Uh, behind us on the table is the complete coilover conversion kit for a 55 Bel Air. Uh, this is from Ride Tech. Um, we love their products. We use them pretty much exclusively on every project we do. Yeah, this video, we're just going to be putting this all in there. We'll show you how we did it um, and uh, answer any questions afterwards. I guess you guys can put in the comments and we'll try to get to you. Yeah, so basically the gist is we take uh, in the front, it's a Pretty standard approach, but they do some cool stuff with the tubular control arms and the angles for the ball joints. Um, they actually adjust the caster angles uh, to make the car a little more drivable um, and performance wise. Uh, so you get new lowers, new uppers, the ball joints all come ready to roll as well. Um, in the rear, you get rid of the uh, old school leaf springs and go with a parallel four link using their bolt in cross member, which is this guy here. Um, and the only welding on the kit is these rear control arm brackets. Um, looks like it should be pretty straightforward. We'll show that in more detail on the car. Well, cool. So we got uh, four coilovers over there by Dan as well. Um, and everything comes packaged very nicely. And these have a million and one. That one mile. Mile warranty. It's that extra mile. That so if you get to a million, tell them they're and they'll replace them. And then before you drive that extra mile. Don't go the extra mile, these shocks. <laughs> That's it, I think. I think we're just gonna uh, get into tearing the car apart, pulling all the old stuff off. Um, I don't know if we're gonna, I guess we'll probably do the front first, uh, cause that's pretty much more straightforward than the back. We'll get all this ready and tear down the car and get it on the lift. Underneath the 55. It's a cool place to hang out. It is, it is. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. There's some uh, older work underneath here. That's not really exactly correct. Uh, missing some hardware. And there's the old air shocks that don't hold air. They do hold air. Yeah, but it runs down pretty quick. It's fine. Yeah, when we got it, it was sitting on the tires almost because the air was depleted out of these. Um, but everything else seems pretty clean under here. It's nice. Looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Mufflers are going to need to be rehomed. Yeah, the mufflers are a single piece all the way back with no hangers. <clears throat> they look like they reside in the location of the cross member. Yeah, we're pretty sure the cross member is just they go right across in here somewhere. Mm, it's in here. Yeah, so. Above the drive shaft. So we're gonna have to do some relocation of those. And these are really big mufflers. Um, we can get slimmer ones that take up less space that have just as good, if not better tone. And move them a little further up. Yeah, because we got all this room for activities up here. There's nothing going on up here, so. All right. What's next? I guess we just start, uh, tear down the front, pull the wheels uh, and tires not off? Not yet. I want to set it on the blocks. Okay, get a ride height. Get under it, and I want to get pre-measurement of ride height, pre-measurement of pinion angle, just so we know where it starts from. Okay. And probably get some left to right measurements and document it all really good. Okay. So we kind of have an idea of where we started ahead of time. Because remember what happened on the Chevelle? Think ahead to people. When you start, this car looks pretty straight, but... The Chevelle's not exactly the straightest thing in the world, we found out after installing the coilover kit and setting all the coilovers at the same height and the car is two inches different from one corner to the other. It was hitting its life at some point, sadly. The car's a little tweaked. It's it's a family heirloom, you leave it alone. All right, so next up is get it on our blocks, our handy dandy blocks. If you have not made these in your shop yet or your home garage, you are missing out. This is the best. The, wow. the best tool you could possibly make in your shop. 
Andy agrees. It's Andy approved. I do love them. I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks in two by fours and some screws that I had and they're fantastic. If you don't have those, you're missing out. Boxes here, and we got our pinion angles, our ride heights before. Uh, we got music on, Dan. And the drive, yeah, we have. We were playing 50s music for the car, so they can feel at home. Um, we put uh, painter's tape on here, and we just write our ride height, our pinion angles at ride height, our drive shaft angles at uh, ride height, just so we have them. Uh, we can always reference them and not lose them. So now we're going to tear down the front. stuff out uh, the only thing we're going to reuse there is going to be the two inch drop spindle Andy. hopefully hopefully yes uh, Andy went through and kind of cleaned up everything here we painted it with a rust barrier so we don't have to worry about it rusting at all and uh, we're gonna hang all the rat tech stuff on next that's the next plan let's do it game on assembly time We just assembled the coil over over there and got it kind of lined up in the pocket there. Control arms are on. Andy, what do you got to say? So one of the things you want to be careful with, and I'll show a little better picture on the other side, um, but the Delran bushing has a little internal sleeve that goes through the hole in the top of this bracket. You want to make sure that that sleeve fits into that hole. They mentioned in the kit that you want to double check that ahead of time and you may need to drill it out to three quarter. We got lucky, ours is already that way. Um, so everything just slid right together, but that would be key because if not, you're just going to crush and destroy that bushing. And I have a feeling you probably end up with a pretty cool knocking sound going down the road yes. eventually once that bushing falls apart. Um, but that's just a note. That looks so much better. That's more good, Dan. I agree. All right, so we've got the uh, control arms are in, the coilover is in, the two inch drop spindle is in. Um, we're gonna run this up a little bit higher once we get uh, the other side set, but um, it's looking good. It looks way, way better than the factory components. <laughs> Let's 
What's up guys? So as promised, I'm showing you on the other side here before I put this to work. But if you follow me up under here, there's a hole right here in the top, which actually I need to remove this little washer from, which apparently is still hanging out up there. And I'll knock that out. Um, but inside of here, when that washer is not hanging out, there's a hole that needs to be at least three quarter. And if you follow me over this way, follow me Dad. This bushing has to sit up inside there and then it captures it this way and they tighten inside of these cups to hold everything together. So if that hole's not big enough, you're gonna end up smashing that together and it's kind of hard to see up in there. So you'll end up doing something like this and then you'll go to tighten it down. It's just gonna smash everything and it's not gonna last real long that way. So small little thing to be careful of. We got the front suspension now mocked up. It's all kind of bolted in. Um, we are moving on to the muscle bar. Um, the muscle bar is gonna go across these two points here and tie into the control arms there. Uh, so Andy's gonna tell you a little bit about what we gotta get going on here. I'm learning as I go, but the gist is this rivet has to go. I'm gonna cut it, notch it, or well, X pattern kind of deal, punch it through. And then there's a plate that goes here that tags into these holes, which somebody's kind of already uh, boogered up from something else, but we're gonna do our best to make it work. Kind of looks like this car maybe took a little bit of a hit in the front, because this is kind of... Yeah, I noticed buckled that a little bit, but we got some buckles going on in we'll, here, but... We'll massage it gingerly with a dead blow or a hammer. It'll be fine. And then there's another hole that gets drilled in here, and we'll show you that in a minute, but it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. What's nice is that it uses this hole, which is the same on both points as uh, kind of the pilot hole to line everything up. So you get nice square uh, mounting locations. Um, but yeah. Doctor. All right, fellas. So we have just ran into something that uh, I'm betting many people have ran into before with Tri-5 Chevys. What is a two-piece versus one-piece frame? And I know it should be easy. And now that I know what to look for, I feel like an idiot. So we're just going to show it so that no one else feels like an idiot again. So if you follow down the length of the frame, just follow me here, all the way down. You notice this well. What's the whole length of the car? That's a two-piece frame. If it was a one-piece frame, this weld, all this way, down, length of the car, would not exist. But it does. However, this comes into play with your cross member that mounts from here to here. This is 35 and an eighth, a quarter, somewhere in there. Our cross member is 33 and a half. Doesn't fit. Now you know. Look at that, it's got actual working shocks. Yeah, she wouldn't like that before. Um, I measured it was about like uh, 25 and an eighth, 25 and a quarter now. To that's, the that's awesome. So, and we've got plenty of adjustment. We can go either way. Yeah, I think, I think uh, depending on what the rear ends up being, we might bring the front down a little. We'll see. The oil pan, it's got that aftermarket that's oil right. pan. It's a drop it's pan. real close to the ground. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. But she looks good. That looks awesome. Now we're waiting on parts. Yeah, now we gotta wait for parts. Pull that down. But guess what? I get a day off. This is true. <laughs> to dinner! You know what else? I need a shower. He said it. He said it. So looking at all of the uh, clearances we're gonna have here, the uh, bar we're about to put in is gonna go from here over to there, and that's gonna pretty much be our locator for all the bars come off for the four link system uh all this has to come out because this is all going to be in the way so the exhaust got to come out there and then our mounts for the coilovers are going to go here so they're going to run in some clearance issues here so we're going to have to redo all this so we're going to have to run a custom exhaust on this uh by the time we're all said and done so this part of the cross member this flat piece there 
has to go flat up against the body mount right there. Um, but this guy is in there. So you have to cut that out. Don't need that. And then uh, Andy's done a really good job of cleaning everything up, smoothing it out. There was some welds through here. You can still see a little bit on this side. Some of the welds there had to be cleaned up because it's got to go flush up against here or the geometry is off all the way back. So, um, but got it all cleaned up. Now, uh, now I put the other cross member in. Let's do it. The right cross member. The only one you need. So, <laughs> so we got a You done? So, so we've got a very small tech tip here. Uh, so once this crossbar is in, what you can do is put your bolts in the bottom. And what that's gonna do is pull this whole piece up as tight as it can go right up here. And then you can drill your side bolts through, um, at least the holes for your side bolts. And they'll be pretty much in the perfect position after that where they belong. Yeah. Yeah, don't get us wrong. I mean, we hammered everything in nice and tight, um, but we wanted to run these in just so if there's any movement up, once I drill these holes, they're in the right spot. Yeah. So. We've got the cross member completely installed as per the manual, which is just these bolts that are- Self-tapping into the frame. Self-tapping into the frame. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's all it needs, according to the instructions. Um, we are not stopping there. It's true. That it makes me uneasy. And we also know this owner tends to like to have a heavy right foot on occasion. On occasion. We would like to make it so that I don't have to lose sleep at night thinking about him doing a clutch drop and something bad happening. Yes. So with that in mind, what we've done is we've ground all the way out. As you see these gray areas, we actually primered this with a weld through zinc primer. So we can, we've ground all the edges here. So we're just gonna put, you know, an inch and a half there, an inch here, just some really heavy welds all the way around it, just to give it some extra support. But, um, but as the kit's designed, this is installed. Um, Rytec has a lot of these on the road and I don't know of any issues they've had this way. No, This and, is more of just my overkillness. Yeah, well, and, and as long as you don't over tighten these, you're fine. These, if you over, if you put these on with Oga Ogas instead of hand torque, it will <laughs> thread out, and you'll you'll you won't. Not the Oga Dogas. Yeah, no, no, no Oga Dogas, guys, come on. Yeah. So, well, cool. Yep. So we're gonna get to welding that, and uh, we one step closer to getting this four link in there. Cool. Let's... So while you're mocking up your uh, bars for the four link here, you might be asking yourself. What do you do about that bracket? Well, Ride Tech has you covered. They send you a brand new bracket. Witchcraft and wizardry. It's pretty amazing. So that'll replace that, give you a nice uh, high clearance bracket. Bring all this in real tight to the frame there. So you don't have any clearance issues with these bars when you go to put your four link in. Cool. Um, basically all your control arms get set at 18 and a half inches, which conveniently enough they come at, but right out of the box that way. But you wanna make sure and double check the measurement. Um, and then you put your brackets in and you swing up to the axle and that should put your axle in the ballpark of centering the wheel in the fender. And it does appear that that is what happened based on the tape measure measurement. Um, we kinda messed around with our pinion angle. We've got it set relatively where it needs to be. Um, you have some fine tuning adjustment for that later, if need be. If you're a little, a couple degrees off here or there, you can kind of mess yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, you know, the upper and the lower. It looks really good. It does. Right now we got that four link with leaf spring going on. Yeah, we're gonna leave these leaf springs in as long as we can, just for convenience more than anything. Um, they're not load bearing currently, they're just kind of hanging out. But as we drop this rear, and take these brackets off to tack everything in place. Um, we're gonna rest the differential or the axle on um, on here. So yeah, it's an extra set of hands. That's all. 
And they're not really in the way right now. We might hit a point where they're in the way, but we haven't yeah. gotten there yet. I mean, that part's coming, but yeah. <laughs> for we now. We haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, the interesting thing is going to be the exhaust. Yes. Um, we'll figure it out. I, I'm not sure where we're going to run that yet. I'm still voting side pipes. Yeah, if Delaware was a different ruling as far as exhaust on cars, we would definitely run side pipes. But I imagine I'm going to have to change this angle and come under this pipe or this bar. And depending on where the coilovers live, maybe over the rear. I don't. I don't know. I gotta. I gotta figure that out. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. Wait, like. yeah, we'll get there. We'll just do turn downs and call it a day. No mufflers. Yeah, just headers. Maybe we'll do inverted headers right out of the roof. Ooh. Just. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> All right. Well, there you go, guys. That's uh, where we're at now. We're on the mock up. Uh, this is the first time we're mocking it up, so we're probably going to re mock it up two or three times at least. Five, six. Yeah, maybe just for. A dozen. A dozen, you know? It's cheaper by the dozen, so. Um, so we'll mock these up. Then uh, we got some, you know, grease pen written around here for where we need it to live so we can quickly kind of eye that up. But we're going to pull this down, get some stuff grinded down, and tack it in place. Uh, check some mock ups for the coilovers. Um, then. Other things. Then other things. Then, yeah. Put it on the blocks again. Check ride height and center and. If it all looks good, more welds and oh, yeah. Yeah. then... Full weld is the last job. Yeah. Well, paint is the last job. Yeah, well, you can't paint, but... That's your gig. Yeah. I don't make things look good. That's your job. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's get to it. All right. So we didn't want to bore you with uh, finish welding all the stuff and painting it, but uh, Andy went through and welded up the uh, mounts onto the rear, got the uh, shocks mounted on here, and built the coilovers. The coilovers go together pretty much the same as the front ones. So uh, we didn't really need to show that again. So... Just finished up getting the exhaust put together here. I wanted to show a quick little clip of this to wrap it up. Uh, mainly because this side is very tight, but it can be done. Thankfully we had some leftover pieces from some other exhaust kits. A builder kit would get you here too. It's just a lot of work to put it all together, but take your time. You can make it happen. We added hangers here, which keeps everything nice off the cross member and pulled together. While on this side, we actually retained the hanger that was on here when we got here. Modified a little bit, but. Right, so we were back in the 55 uh, post four link install and ride that coilover. Um, I think it's gonna be a fun little drive. I think it's gonna be world so world different than before. So I think it's gonna make my favorite car more of my favorite car. I think so. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. All right, Jinx. Yeah. Wake up, car. Run, run.
Chris Phelan hogging the road. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a wrap on uh, installing the uh, Ride Tech coilover system with the four link on the uh, Tri Five era uh, Chevy. Whole new car. Mm, yeah, it transforms it. It makes it a modern race car. I mean, it really does. A damn good cruiser, at least. Yeah, I mean, it's we, awesome. We've only done two things to this. We did the four link and we did the Sniper EFI system. And between those two, this thing is too fast for its own good. <laughs> <laughs> At least for the rear tires on. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to change those up because the, the tires that are on there are just too dry. They're I think just... they're from like 04. Yeah. They uh, they don't have a lot of grip, so <laughs> you feel it immediately. Um, as soon as you put the throttle down, the tires are just like, all right, we're on ice. This, yeah. is, this is how we do. But no wheel hop. None. 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 <laughs> it's like smooth as glass. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> that, that system is uh, kind of perfect. It's pretty awesome. Um, easy to install, it's easy to tune, easy to customize if you want to change your driving patterns or how you're driving. It's um, it's really awesome. And this car just loves it. And Andy loves it. I really do. <laughs> I really, really do. Um, but yeah, that's it for this. Uh, we'll put some links in the description for the parts we used, um, where you can get them. Um, and uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Dan, jump in. Yeah. I'm not done. I'm driving next. Okay. I'm driving next. <laughs>